That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Brian O'Halloran. Jason David Frank. Humberto Ramos. Please do not change channel. Wide web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pomacher. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't had a chance yet, we're going to let you take just a second to subscribe. We have artists, authors, filmmakers, entertainers, musicians, three homeless guys I met in the parking lot because they were fun, uh, all on the Hanging With Web Show. We're here right now hanging with comic artist Ed McGinnis. Ed, man, thank you for taking a few minutes. Because I, I, I saw your table. Yes. Yeah. A few. He needed a few minutes. Yeah, I did. Actually, I, I'm not officially supposed to be doing an interview. He just needed a place to sit <laughs> for like, you know, t 10 minutes. So you've had an awesome career. You're doing great things. I, I couldn't be more thankful. <laughs> We're done. Thank you. You've made him happy. Um, Let's talk. How did you get started in comics? Oh, man. Um, wait, wait, wait. We, yeah, we, we have the classic, my mom handed me a crayon, and that was what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you know this was something that I, I want to do this? It's like a thing. Electric Company Spider-Man. Electric? Really? <laughs> yes. Electric Company Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, they just, that, that was it. And from there, it's just that I, I've been in love with superheroes, you know? So, so For those of you who aren't aware... Those of you who aren't aware, Tobey Maguire wasn't the first cinematic Spider-Man. <laughs> Just the first one you know about, Electric Company, Spider-Man. We actually did have an 80s TV series. We don't talk about it much, but it does exist. You can YouTube it. May have been the 70s, was it? Seven, oh, it was that? Late 70s. Oh, shit. We I'm in trouble now. I just dated ourselves. <laughs> Damn. Oh, man. You see what just happened there? And I was going to have to work so hard to color correct the gray. And so... Um, Electric Company Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Right. That's, yeah, I, I mean, I had... What was your first professional comic? Oh, my first professional comic? What was uh, that? I, I I did some underground independent stuff. I don't even remember the names of some of them. I mean, I, I don't even think I was paid on Underground independent stuff. Yeah, like... I, that, I, that's, guys, that in the industry, that's what's known as free work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Haven't been paid yet. We have a lot of fancy terms <laughs> for it. We're independent creators <laughs> underground right. there's a lot of things we use but mostly it means we're poor <laughs> and ramen noodles are really good yeah <laughs> exactly so that was I, I cut my teeth on some of that didn't get paid on it but it was just a, a big a business card um, nice. so basically nice. I th the first thing I actually That's my did whole was, career by the way so it's all right yeah. <laughs> first thing I did was uh, Vampirella. That was Vampirella. the that first of with Tom Snigowski. Nice. Yeah, that was he's he's such a great guy. I owe so much to to him. He's he's uh, he was was huge in my career. And in in kind of a weird turn of events, he actually was my neighbor, and I had no idea. <laughs> I love it when that happens. Yeah, it's the best thing. Yeah. Um, now you're you're working on uh, the Avengers. New Avengers right, right now. now. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you look back and you think, you know, there we are, Electric Company, Spider-Man, and then you get into Vampirella, do you ever see yourself working on the Avengers? No, but no. you know, it's one of those weird things. I kind of just, I'm into what I'm doing at the moment, uh -huh. you know, and maybe it's it's not near, so near much sightedness. Of napper. Yeah, I'm not yeah. so much of a napper. I, I'm a napper. I am a napper. Uh, actually, yes. after this show, yeah. I will be a napper. <laughs> but mapper, as far as mapping, my my mapping skills are pretty pathetic. So I kind of roll with the punches. That's even how I make pages and draw stuff. I kind of just ad lib it as it's happening. It, as yeah, it's, it's happening. It's all about feeling it out. But uh, what's your first day? You get you get a writer comes in and says, "This is my here's what I'm doing." Yeah. What 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 is your first process? What's your visualization process like? Or, or do you just sit there and go, let's that, just draw that? I mean, are you I, kind of I, a... I, I, I'll read the script as, as best I can, or at least in chunks, but I try to get at least an idea of where the entire thing's going. Uh -huh. And then um, I'll just take little notes and jot stuff down. If there's a particular image on a page that I'm inspired by, I'll kind of do that, maybe build the page around it. it, it 
like I kind of forward artists that too. There's no particular art, artists are art enthusiasts most of the time. Yeah. So, what artist inspires you the most? Oh, there's so many. There's so many. I mean, the first is there somebody's work who you uh, that you have to be careful to avoid, you know, because it's just it's so inspirational or something that speaks to you like that. Um, no, there's just a, there's a lot of people like that. But I I, I I can say the first the first comic artist that I realized that wow this guy's art is different and it really speaks to me was John Byrne when I was a kid. I was turned on to him when I was really young. And then, uh, then Art Adams came along, and it was like, oh boy! And that really made me know that this is what I want to do. I really want to do this. Super inspired by that. Um, and there's been so many others. Almost like it would be pointless to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he he he, he aimed pretty high there, anyway. Um, what is well, obviously, your new Avengers is yeah. what you're working on right yep. now. Um, is there anything, if you had to pick something that you would, were aspiring to, is there, if you had to map for a minute, is there something that you're aspiring to get to? Something you want to work on? Maybe your own project, something that's... Um, I, you know, I probably eventually my own project. I've got a bunch of ideas. Um, that's because you're an artist and that's what artists do. Yeah, that's, I've been doing this for, you know, 20 something years at this point, you know? So I, I've definitely been accumulating ideas since I was a kid. And so at some point as they have come to, up just to the come table. Out. Now you've done a lot of work, okay? Um, as people are coming up to the table at the cons, single most asked about property that you've worked on. Oh man, it changes so much. But oh, does it? Does it change? Yeah, no, it, it's, it, it like, it's literally yeah. it's like regional. Like oh really? Like certain cons I'll oh, get yeah, a ton like of that. Superman, Batman. So, okay. Other cons I get a ton of Hulk. Um, I got a ton of Spider-Man, Deadpool, but I've been getting a lot of vibe from Avengers that this but it just came out. The well, first, yeah, yeah. So, but does that does that have a huge impact on the fan base when you come when a new movie comes out, or especially now, because they're not even just I, I, they're not even movies, man. They're like epic tales of one. They're like billion-dollar tales. Yes, they are. Every time, it's I don't even measure anymore. I'm like. They, they, we do the weekly radio show, and they say, well, you know, let's talk about you know, what was the best grossing weekend. And I'm like, why? It's a billion dollars. Just to say a billion dollars. <laughs> it's automatically a billion dollars. That's it, automatically. I, I think Mickey Mouse prints billion-dollar bills. That's what he does. <laughs> um, okay, I like, I, this, is one of my, this is one from my book. I wrote this one down. If you could draw Ed McGinnis into any universe, but, you, but here's the rule. You, you don't get to write it. You just draw yourself in and you have to spend a week there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you go? Probably like Muppets or something. The Muppets. Somewhere, <laughs> Somewhere safe. I wouldn't die. Somewhere <laughs> safe, yeah. Because <laughs> That's the first time we've had the Muppets. We've actually had people beg to get out of the chair if we put them near Game of Thrones. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere safe and goofy. Where goofy, you know, the yeah. worst thing that's going to happen is, you yeah. know, a, a muppet yeah. toss Somebody will throw, like, a pie at me yeah. or something, you know? Um, in, now, as the, the comic book insider right now, as things transition... Insider? <laughs> well, as far I mean, as you know, we're telling the truth. He knows right. stuff. Um... Is there any, are there, I mean, we have seen what was fan culture or subculture become pop culture. Yeah. And we're transitioning and translating, and I think I'm using that word correct, translating from comic book into film, into television. Yeah. Is it's there a everywhere. story that you would like to see brought over and, and sort of, I mean, comic culture is comic culture. We all love our comic books. That's why we're here. Well, most of us. Uh, but is there a story that you'd like to see mainstream, something that's still comic culture and you'd like to see more people get into? You know, it's funny. Um, it was a book see, that... See, one time Deadpool was that yeah, guy. No, Deadpool was the guy that everybody's like, you know, nobody ever does a Deadpool. We need to do a Deadpool. And now I, we as have far, As far as the story goes, as far as the story goes, it was actually something I worked on, uh, the Nova book. Um, uh -huh. I didn't even want to work on that book. And Jeff Loeb was writing it. We were attached, you know... Um, but by the end of it, I didn't want to leave the book because I fell in love with the characters, but the story is just so good. Uh -huh. And I think it would connect with a lot of younger fans, and I, I, it did really well, but I, I would love to see that done cinematically. I think, because I think, it, or even a TV series, it, 
Yeah, well, there's so much there now. Oh, there's so much heart to it. That's okay. the thing. I when really you, like to see that. When you think about, when you think, when we, we talk about, you know, when we were growing up, all right? Yeah. When you think about when we were growing up, an attempt at a superhero on the small screen, you don't even think about the big screen. Dude, they put cap, like fake ears on Cap's head. You yeah. Know? You remember it was, that? It was, remember that? Yeah. And then, and then they gave him a motorcycle helmet. <laughs> Because that sounded like a good idea. <laughs> That's right. Re that was remember that was the attempt at realism. Yes. Because you wouldn't wear those wings, but a motorcycle helmet with wings. They painted, had to spend okay. the budget, so they bought the ears. It was yeah, yeah. Right to it was, budget. It was the thing, right? They, you know, they had so to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the best thing they ever did in in, in our era in TV was was hire Lou Ferrigno. Oh man. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that was. No, Wonder Woman was great. I was a kid, you know. It was. It was for for us. For us as young, kids, yeah. You know what I mean? Kids. I'm trying to picture what our parents thought when we turned that on, though. And Linda Carter spun around. Dad went, what? <laughs> and Mom just went, turn that off. <laughs> I know, exactly. And, you know, but it was great for us. And then, but now they can do so much. We can oh, yeah. tell. Because they, they, campy versions were great for kids, introducing us to those characters. Oh, yeah. But... This is just good storytelling now. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Now it's There's like so novel, it it's too. like novelizing. It's like the comic books. Because you guys put a lot of thought into the art. The scriptwriters put a lot of thought into the story arcs. Yeah. And now we're getting to tell those stories cinematically, and it's amazing. Nova would be awesome. Oh, I think so. That would be. I, see, I think so. It Hollywood, is. why don't you listen <laughs> ever to me? Because I would love. Anyway, never mind. Uh, where are you going next from here? You got a busy um, con schedule coming home. up? No. Oh, home. <laughs> home. Sleep nap. Remember he said he, he's a napper. No, my, my next uh, show, I'm pretty sure, is in Las Vegas at the end of next month, maybe. You poor guy. Yeah. Yeah. Las Vegas. So. Well, there goes those royalty checks. No, I'm not a gambler. I'm not <laughs> really? even staying in the... Uh, that not was part of my no, thing. No. Put me in the... I just want to stay away from all that. Yeah, I don't yeah. even care about any of it. <laughs> I'll do the show, though. Yeah, yeah. I'll do the show. Yeah. You know what? Uh, we were out west not long ago, and uh, I traveled when I was younger to yeah. Vegas, and it was, you know, it was, it was the Vegas of myth. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And I was Casino. there. We drove through on our way to San Diego Comic Con a couple years ago with Michael, and uh, it was like Orlando with gambling. It, they, you can eat off the sidewalks now. It's just amazing what they've done. Oh yeah, I uh, yeah. And then to the idea of, of, of a big con in Vegas is just. Why don't you just take my money? I mean, that's... <laughs> Plus, Maine's cold, you know. Anytime I go to a warm place. Yeah, man, that's just... <laughs> then you wonder why people travel the con circuit. <laughs> Maine, okay? Maine. Yeah. First of all, anybody who's a Stephen King reader knows nothing good ever happens in Maine. It's always <laughs> scary and cold and dark, and we're going to rip off George Martin and full of terrors. So, uh, all right, she's going to hold that damn card up until I shut up, so I'm going to do it. We're going to thank our partners and our friends at Something Unique Magazine out of St. Louis, Famous Faces and Funnies. Rick Shea and the crew over there are the first sponsors of the show. Awesome. Fantastic thank you. people. Krypton Radio for hosting the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour every week. Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason. Space Coast Comics, Jake Estrada and David Grace are fantastic. Asylum Convention Entertainment Services, who booked us into Megacon on the floor where we can hang out with Ed. Man. So we're doing good. <laughs> um, thank you guys for doing that. Everybody out there, remember, subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Thanks, Ed. Thank, thank you. you so much.